Hi, I'm Lorna. I'm a research scientist within R&D and I work in the cow reproduction space. I'm also a share milker, so I have some first-hand experience of what it's like to go out and find a paddock of 10 calves and all of them are bulls and it's not a great feeling. So we're going to talk a bit today about sex ratios and some of the things that may or may not impact them. And uh, I'm, I'm Chris and I am also a scientist in, uh, in the R&D department at LIC. Um, I come from a molecular biology background, so I, um, I've worked a lot with DNA um, in the lab. Traditionally I did used to spend a lot of time wearing a lab coat, um, but not so much these days. These days I do um, nearly all of my work uh, in front of a computer analysing um, DNA sequence and, and genotypes. Um, I, I got interested in cow genetics when I started milking cows on a friend's farm um, when I was 15 and uh, put myself through university by milking cows uh, and after a little bit of a diversion from um, agricultural uh, science when I moved back to New Zealand 12 years ago um, I, I started working in um, cow both genetics and epigenetics um, and these days I'm very interested in, in trying to help genomic selection um, be improved in New Zealand. Yeah. So today we're here to bust a few myths that popped up when we put up an article around how many heifers you might expect on the farm. So we've been doing some research so you don't have to. So the, the first question we thought we would, we would answer is do sires actually determine the sex of um, the offspring? Yes, they do. Well, mostly yes, yes, <laughs> as with most things. Um, Chris is going to explain a bit exactly how that works. Yeah. So, um, cattle have 29 chromosomes, so these are, these are the pieces of DNA that, that encode all the, all the genetic material needed to be a cow, um, and they also have two sex chromosomes. Um, the cows have uh, two X sex chromosomes, whereas bulls have um, one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. So when sperm are produced in the testes, um, these cells, they undergo lots of divisions and during one of these divisions, um, to make the actual sperm cells, you have the X and Y chromosome being separated. So each sperm cell contains either an X or a Y. And because they've both originally come from a cell containing an X and a Y, you end up with exactly the same number of sperm that contain X, chrom X sex chromosomes and the same number containing Y sex chromosomes. Because cows uh, have XX as their sex chromosomes, all their eggs have an X sex chromosome. So when a, a sperm containing an X chromosome fertilizes the egg, you end up with XX, so that, that embryo will turn out to be a heifer calf. If a sperm containing a Y chromosome um, fertilizes an egg, um, you'll have XY, and that calf will end up being, being a bull calf. And there's no actual selection um, on the sperm themselves. So in theory, um, there should be 50-50 heifer calves and bull calves and that's on the whole what we see when, when we track our data um, from the bulls that we, we have at LIC um, and we do we do periodically go through and keep track of um, the bulls each individual bull and see um, what percentage heifer calves and bull calves they, they're producing each year um, from data off of Minder from farms that are, that are recording um, heifers and bull calves uh, at, at, at the date of calving and while on some years some bulls will produce 51, 52, maybe 53 percent bulls. Um, really, there's no there's no difference um, from 50-50 that we see. We said yeah that the sire does mostly um, control the sex of the calf. There have been there have periodically been some um, myths about whether or not. Um, Female, so the female nutrition, uh, the female reproductive tract state, um, the, the acid and alkaline balance um, of the uterus, whether or not this, for, for this affects whether or not um, you'll end up with a heifer calf or a bull calf. What do you think about that, Lorna? Mostly no. Mostly no, <laughs> yeah. There, often you will see a, you will see a um, 
newspaper headline that will say the nutrition of the mother affects whether or not the sex of the offspring. Um, but actually, if you if you dig into the actual scientific research behind that, um, most of those will be associated with it's a difference of one out of twenty. So. Um, in a study that was done in humans, um, maybe 10 years ago now, um, the difference was 10 boys out of 20 being born, 20, um, 20 babies being born, versus 11 boys out of 20 babies being born. So, um, out of the 700 people that that were investigated in the study, so you can imagine either if you have a big dairy farm, that might be just your dairy farm, or um, if you have a small dairy farm, your farm and the neighbour's farm. Um, if you saw that sort of difference um, in sex you probably wouldn't wouldn't be complaining too much um, about how many heifer calves you were you were getting. And at the end of the day you need to feed your cows so they achieve body condition score targets. Trying to manipulate their feeding to change the sex of the calf is probably going to have unintended consequences on milk production and that's your main driver. So we had a few comments around the acid or alkaline environment in the uterus and whether that affects the sex ratio and basically the answer is no. The acid alkaline balance of the body is really tightly regulated by mechanisms within the body. The body is generally slightly alkaline if you feed your cows way too much grain and made them sick with acidosis, then this will be slightly acidic, but you definitely don't want to be doing that. So the cows will look after themselves. The main thing is to keep them healthy and well fed and maximise the number of pregnancies you get, and that will do the most to helping get more of the calves. So we also had some comments about around whether iodine could affect the ratio of heifers to bulls and the answer was a big fat no. Not However, even a year nah. <laughs> not even a year nah. However iodine is a really important trace element and so it is important to make sure your cows have enough of it. The vets can test for that and most New Zealand soils are deficient in it. So it's worth keeping in mind when you're looking at your mineral programs to make sure your cows are getting enough. And it does have an impact on reproduction if the cows aren't getting enough. But it doesn't affect the sex ratio. <laughs> So now Chris is going to deal with one of the conspiracy theories up there with the moon landing. What happens to the Y-bearing sperm from the sexing process? Well I do like a very good conspiracy theory Lorna. Um, we, have, we have to say that this really is a myth that, um, that we're taking the, the leftover sperm from the sexing process and, and mixing that back in um, with, with new samples that we're collecting. Um, what, what happens in, for the sexing process is that the semen is collected here at Newstead. Um, it then goes through some initial um, quality screening steps um, and only really good quality semen can be sent over to sexing technologies. So the semen actually goes from here um, to another location to, to sexing technologies um, that, that does the, the, the sorting for us. Um, there are 21 steps that these sperm cells then have to go through in order to be sorted. It, it really doesn't make any financial or practical sense to be to be using um, the male, the Y-containing y sperm um, after the sexing process. They get disposed as, as biological waste um, by sexing technologies. Yep, they don't even make it back to you. No. So, myth busted. Some of these, some of these myths um, sort of come up because of, of correlations, and and many things are correlated, and um, but correlation does not always equal causation. Um, and I brought along a couple of my favourite ones um, to show you today. Um, the first one is um, is the 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 correlation between um, organic food sales and uh, and autism. So organic food sales have been um, increasing since the late 90s, as you can see with with the red line. 
and then this is actually very very highly correlated with the increase of autism over the same the same period but it's pretty unlikely that that eating more organic food is causing more people to be autistic um, my other favorite example um, is here um, where on the bottom we have um, the number of pirates the de decreasing number of pirates and um, on this axis we have um, the increase in global temperatures so all this work that's been putting into minimizing pirates from the world over the last probably 50 or 100 years um, is that actually causing global warming maybe probably not <laughs> <laughs> i hope you've enjoyed listening to our myth busting session and we'd love to hear any other theories you've got out there and we'll look forward to doing some future myth busting with any wild things we see coming across our desks and not not just related to um to sex of carbs but um r d here at lic has quite a wide range of, of people that that know a lot about a lot of different things um from biology to statistics to um, computer science so so there'll be somebody here that will likely be able to to help with the myth bus myth busting Bum 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 b